myself. I'm Marion Roberts. I'm a Lever Hume Emeritus Fellow at the University of Westminster in London and um, I'm starting a research project on urban night and urban design so party zones is very interesting for me and we should have four very interesting presentations. To start off we have Sylvia dudek mankowska with uh, Miroslav, um, gosh, I can't read your name, Groshov, <laughs> ski, probably, and, and they're both from the Faculty of Geography and Regional Studies at the University of Warsaw. And they are going to talk about Warsaw at night, mapping nightlife hotspots. So over to you both, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Let me, I would like to uh, share. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so my name is Miroslav Grochowski and there are two of us, uh, authors of the study and uh, I'm the presenter, but Sylvia is with us in case you have comments or questions. Uh, we'll address them at the end together. We are geographers and uh, the team of nightlife uh, in Polish cities, the team is not very popular, not only among geographers, but also among representatives of different disciplines. So what we decided to, to do, we decided to start with a simple stuff, which means something like um, uh, identification, inventorization of what we have in Warsaw and how it works. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about Warsaw uh, just to make this city more familiar to you, some basic facts. Uh, we are the biggest city in Poland, 1.8 million people, and every day there are more than 500,000 people coming to Warsaw, crossing the border of Warsaw, they come to work or they come to use different services. The uh, average population density is 3,500, uh, but we have areas, I'm pointing them right now, with population density like 120 people per square kilometer, which, which is like, you know, in rural areas. And in the center, uh, in this district, which is called Śródmieście, the density is uh, almost 6,000 people. On this map, on the right, you see uh, distribution of population in the city. It is important uh, in this case that, I mean, in this sense that uh, this is like potential demand for uh, specific, for specific uh, services. History is important for every city uh, in Warsaw. It's especially important because Warsaw was destroyed during the war. And 85% uh, of buildings were destroyed. And then after the war, the Warsaw was rebuilt as a socialist city. Uh, socialist city and new political regime, communist regime with very strong rigid control of social behavior and command economy. So for many decades, you know, light, nightlife was something completely unknown because we had no private property, no private ownership of land or buildings. Uh, all these uh, facilities like restaurants or uh, cafeterias, coffee shops, etc., they were owned uh, by the government um, for, for, for many, many years. The changes started in 1990 uh, with systemic transformation of political system in Poland. Warsaw now is metropolitan city. We have metropolitan class. Uh, we are uh, richer, I may say, and people have uh, many new expectations. They want to live like people in other uh, European Union cities. And we have also new lifestyle of residents and part of this lifestyle is also this nightlife. Uh, how also looks these days, it's, uh, it's a city with concentric zone pattern that was formed during a couple of last years. Most people they live 
uh, in housing estates that are located in peripheral areas. We have rediscovered Viswa River, which is very, which is very important uh, component of Warsaw landscape. For years, it was uh, forgotten because of pollution. Now we have beaches on both sides of the river. We have clubs, we have uh, coffee shops, we have bars, etc. As I said, uh, we are geographers, and we decided to start uh, with from very simple geographic perspective, just identification of structure and uh, identification of concentration of nightlife industry in Warsaw. Then, after we started our study, we decided to focus on the central district, which is called Shudmieszcze. And this is because uh, although every district has its own service center, in fact, nightlife uh, facilities or premises, they are concentrated in downtown, in the center. And we, for the purpose of this study, we decided that uh, uh, we have three time periods. Evening for us is from 8 till 11 p.m., then nighttime from 11 till 2, and late night from 2 a.m. till 5 a.m. This is the distribution uh, of four categories, restaurants, coffee shops, bars, and clubs in Śródmieście district, in the central district of Warsaw. And as you see, uh, this area is pretty crowded uh with these facilities however if you look just at restaurants and coffee shops then the pattern is not as messy as it was on the previous slide most uh restaurants are located along main uh, roads this road uh, is very popular among tourists uh, we have Old Town and New Town here, uh, historical areas of Warsaw. And uh, as you see, they are pretty well saturated. The density is very high. We have also uh, the areas with governmental buildings and offices, Warsaw Stock Exchange. And uh, these people, they need services like restaurant and coffee shops. So. It's obvious that uh, owners, because now everything is private uh, in, in Warsaw. Uh, it's a simplification, but most restaurants, bars, and coffee shops, they are run by private people, by, by individuals. So it's not like we had for many decades after, after the war. And uh, then if you look at the distribution of bars and clubs, then uh, we see here uh, that there is a concentration, there are some clusters. The interesting thing is that, like in case of bars, uh, all these facilities, uh, they are very different in terms of quality of services uh, and how they operate. I mean, some of them, they are like temporary construction serving beer. Some of them, especially those close to this attractive area of Old Town, uh, they are located on the first floor of buildings and they are more civilized. The interesting thing is that Warsaw, although it's a big city and we have many tourists coming every year, not only during holidays time, the number of clubs is very limited. In other districts, it's very difficult to find a club open for the public and clubs they are, that are open till uh, 11 p.m., for example, or, or even longer. Uh, in downtown, we have these clusters, we have concentration, we have concentration of clubs. Uh, then we focus on central part of district, of this Shudmieszcie district. And as you see, this picture is much clearer, uh, and you see the location along the main streets. This is the, the street, as I said, uh, minutes before the most popular among tourists. Then we have also new developments, new new restaurants located on Viswa Boulevard. This is new investment of local authority uh, of Warsaw, and uh, we are very proud. It looks really good, and uh, it's like uh, prestigious, I may say, area in Warsaw. On the other side, 
there are, there are not many of these facilities, and this is because these two parts of Vispa River are completely different. This one is like a wildlife, you know, uh, river bank. So if you if you come to Warsaw and if you visit this part and that part, then you will see that we are talking about two completely different worlds. But this area is also extremely popular among Warsaw citizens because this is very informal environment uh, and these bars and restaurants, they offer much more than just food or drinks. They offer also very specific atmosphere. So when we looked at number of uh, facilities located in the, in the center, it's dominated by restaurants. Restaurants is the most popular service uh, offered in the city. Then we have coffee shops, then we have bars, uh, pubs, and at the end clubs. These are opening hours uh, from Monday to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you look at this uh, bars, at this diagram, then you see that all these facilities uh, that are presented on this diagram, uh, they are usually open uh, till 11 uh, during, uh, I mean, in the period of Monday till Thursday on Fridays. It's a little longer. And then the nightlife in Warsaw starts uh, on Saturday and then it's going down all these activities on Sundays. When we look at opening hours, then restaurants, if you want to dine in Warsaw, you have to be aware that from Monday to Thursday, the time will be limited. It will be a little longer on Friday and Saturday, but then Sunday is like the end of the season. Bars, they operate in different way. They are open uh, pretty long. Some of them, as you see, till 5 a.m. The Sunday is like the, the end. And specific situation with clubs, because of the character and, uh, and the offer, they start usually uh, a little later. They start at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. And, uh, and they finish late night. Uh, I will have more comments about clubs later. And pubs again, uh, like, like bars, uh, they operate much longer. On these maps, I will go through them very quickly. You will see all, this, all these facilities, uh, how they are operate in terms of opening hours from Monday to Thursday evening. This is Monday to Thursday evening. Then you have Monday to Thursday nighttime. And then you have Monday to Thursday late night. And as you see, it's interesting because most of them, uh, they, they close pretty early. And the interesting fact is that these areas, which are uh, the most attractive for tourists and also for, for Warsaw inhabitants, they are empty. There is nothing to go uh, to in terms of restaurant, coffee shop, or, uh, or the other facilities. Then if you look at Fridays, this is Friday evening, Friday night time, and Friday late night. And uh, the next maps, this is Saturday, Saturday evening, Saturday night, more dots on this map, and late night, more dots on this map. So Saturday, it's like a peak of nightlife uh, in Warsaw. And then Sunday, Sunday evening, nighttime and late night. So the pattern is pretty similar and this, uh, this facilities that are open, uh, that are open nighttime, usually they are open uh, also late night till uh, 3 a.m. Uh, conclusions from our study is, uh, we are not discovering America, but we are discovering some interesting patterns from the point of view of the future of development of nightlife. The first thing that is that restaurants and coffee shops are located along the main streets and they open relatively early. So especially during holidays, during summertime, the streets are, are empty. You can walk over there. There is nothing else to do pretty often. In terms of clusters, Bars and clubs, they form small clusters and they are located pretty close to these main streets. 
this is like, you know, um, sometimes parallel streets to the main streets. Clubs, it's a very interesting phenomenon because many of them, they are closed. They are not seen as safe places. Uh, they are located in strange location. Uh, there is nothing like a landscape. There is nothing like a district of clubs. There is nothing like this. Generally, Warsaw goes to bed early. And although Warsaw goes to bed early, we have many conflicts related to the nightlife because uh, the reason is that Warsaw was rebuilt as a, as I said, socialist city. And even in the old town, we have a mixed functions, residential functions and, uh, and other functions. And people, they complain, uh, they file protests and the local government uh, has to work, you know, to solve this problem because sometimes it's getting really very difficult. I mean, people, they say that they run businesses and they want to be open as long as possible. Uh, inhabitants, they say that that's their place of life and they don't want to have, you know, shouting people or drinking people on the street next to their apartments. However, since Warsaw is uh, trying to make itself more and more attractive, uh, we think that we will have to, to deal with this, with this issue pretty soon. One deputy mayor is responsible for solving problems related to nightlife in Warsaw, and um, he has a lot of work to do. So very briefly, that's what I wanted to present uh, to you. Thank you. Have you heard me? Yes, yes. thank okay. you very much. Yes. It's that's uh, an excellent timing. Um, so um, we move straight on to the next presentation, which is from Claudia Maria <laughs> Rodriguez um, yeah. <laughs> and she's an independent researcher from Portugal in Coimbra, uh, that where she got her PhD, and she's going to talk about Porto in Portugal and about the party rhythm. Her title of her presentation is nocturnal porto rhythms the party district revisited okay. over to you maria great thank you um thanks for uh, for being here i'm very it's it's it's, it's with a, a lot of pleasure that I'm in this Congress. I must congratulate the organization and in particular Manuel because I'm doing night studies since uh, I, I don't know if uh, uh, 15 years ago I began uh, studying violence between, between young people uh, then I did my PhD. It was about uh, the emergent uh, party district in the city center. And um, it's curious because the, I, I did this study, I started study 10 years ago and I was, uh, I sent my abstract to this conference uh, in order to revisit this uh, party district. And then the party district was closed. Uh, so it's ironic and I, uh, I have seen some similarities between the, the process of booming of party district and the process of closure and disclosure now. And I, I want to reflect uh, with, with you about this. I'm going to present, a, to present my my study starting for the scenario it was Porto uh, 10 years ago uh, the nightlife was booming in the in the party in the historical and uh, uh, city center uh, I designed a, a urban rhythmography in order to to capture the nightlife rhythms in this space 
uh, and consider ma uh, the dialectic of space production using particularly Henri Lefebvre um, studies in theory. Um, then I will I'll go to present uh, the Nocturnal City story of Porto and the party district booming. It's curious because I, I have done uh, some maps similar to the Mirolava that I've presented before, um, but I'm not, I, I'm only, I have only one or two here, but it's curious because uh, it's similar, my, my maps, but uh, the night in Porto is uh, uh, start too late and uh, ends too late. Uh, comparatively. And so nowadays, uh, with this uh, situation, uh, the nightlife uh, 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 closed before midnight, and uh, there is a bohemian void that people are, are experiencing, and uh, me too, because I am a bohemian also, a night, a night player, so I, I must apologize for my anxiety because I'm suffering, I'm under this influence of this uh, social uh, everyday life that I, I don't have now. But it's curious, uh, we, we reflect about, about uh, that. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I will finish my, my, my presentation talking about this and, and how Porto and the people in Porto are reacting to, to this uh, bohemian and parted void. <clears throat> um, the urban rhythmography is uh, a method to explore macro and micro production of the nocturnal city and the every night light use. And how? Uh, experience, that's why I'm saying that I am a bohemian, I am doing the, the field research um, uh, mainly inspired by rhythm analysis of Henri Lefebvre and ethnography, so I am a, a, a night player also. And I was experimenting uh, how to capture, to, to grasp, the nocturnal rhythms of the, the city. Um, as Lefebvre says, uh, in order to analyze a rhythm, one must be in, in the rhythm and outside the rhythm. So it's these moment, movements that I, I also always uh, make be, between the objective and subjective and between macro and micro uh, is uh, common to all my, my, my experience of urban rhythmography that I call. And uh, this is what happens also in dance. We, we, got, we, we are in, in world and, and we are external if, if it is necessary. So uh, I, I observe and analyze uh, nightlife as a uh, as a dance and a, and a music and integrate music and dance in this not to know city. Um, I had listening points and walks. I walked, uh, I had walked to this party district, trying to capture also, also the socioeconomic, historical, urban and experimental context contextualization and the production, regulation and consumption of the nocturnal city. Uh, and capturing also uh, the expressions of the nocturnal city, go, going out and the daily night. So uh, the rhythmic, rhythmicities are the rhythms experience and expressions. And I had many plans and plots in my, that you can see here. I, I, I will not explain all, uh, all, the, the, all the elements, but uh, it's, it's just to say that I, I'm, uh, in, this, in this methodology, I'm always doing uh, an effort to, with my body, to absorb the rhythms of the night and then to analyze them and, and translate them to, with uh, uh, instruments and with narratives. 
Uh, so I, I use uh, observation, uh, discussion groups, gathering uh, uh, the interview, uh, photographies. Um, uh, this is, is this is saying that uh, is finishing the the reunion from uh, ten minutes to now. I I, I get a notice. It's yes, okay. uh, don't worry, I will contact Manuel right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I use the participate observation. It, uh, I, I have um, collect flyers, I have walks, the, the urban walk and sojourning. It's uh, um, a particular uh, and critical aspect of a uh, feature of my rhythmography. And I was always uh, trying to do this movement uh, again between what the urban rhythms can translate about the social organization. <coughs> and uh, here Lefebvre <coughs> says about uh, what, what is objectivity. And the objectivity uh, has meanings and has um, as uh, narratives can be all, all, also, and subjective narratives also objective. Here, this, the uh, brief history of uh, Porto Knight's life. In the yellow, we have the party district, as is my, my place unity. Uh, at orange, uh, orange, we have Ribeira, the, the previous party district that I call. Um, then uh, to pink, we have uh, near the river the boats and other bars uh, that were more uh, in the end of the last century and the beginning of, of this. Then uh, at uh, darker blue, we have um, Massarellos and Foz, also uh, and a, night, a nightlife uh, zone. Um, and that uh, green in green we have uh, an industrial zone that was uh, for many years uh, and uh, before the party district uh, boomed uh, the the party district of uh, of uh, nightlife in Porto and then I now I'm going to concentrate on the yellow one that is the the party district. So, um, I, I uh, in 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 global uh, sense, I trying to I try I'm trying to to capture the dialectic production, and to see how emancipation co coexists with linear and social reproduction in night, because we see as as the previous communication said that. Uh, um, the, the city centers are the, are being uh, appropriated by, by nightlife and tourism associated also. So there's a, a great urban marketing and city visibility that is uh, uh, around the, almost uh, all cities, uh, occidental cities. <clears throat> And so they, they are, the cities are explicitly engaging the social configuration of their central spaces. They are temporali temporalizing the spaces. <clears throat> so this is the party district context in the, um, in the city. Uh, when I study, when I start to study 10 years ago, it was the beginning of the boom. The, the, the left side was the booming when and the right side was uh, more residual and nowadays uh, these two uh, sides are more or less uh, as nowadays no because today they, they, they don't they are closed but uh, more or less the same in the uh, in the all uh, two two columns of uh, party district there was a not to know city mediatization and it's booming. Uh, all, all, all magazines and, and papers and uh, in the public space of the city, there was a, 
publicity to the the particularity of the nightlife in Porto, and the pub, uh, the public space uh, was uh, translating to to also to um, to tourists. We see um, stances in, in in English to appeal the the the, the tourists and the, the other city users and than the, the inhabitants. And the, then what's, what, what happens? Uh, I, I put this here because it says, oops, I gentrified the neighborhood. And this is, is what happens with the, the, the bohemian uh, appropriation. Usually uh, before the gentrification uh, uh, being uh, uh, consolidated, is the bohemian that uh, appropriates the city and then uh, all the interests of the market uh, uh, appropriates the city and uh, normally gentrifies and then it, it was what happens in Porto. Uh, now I want, will talk about uh, heterotopy and nocturnal time and space uh, because I think the nightlife is uh, by itself an heterotopy uh, or to say heterotopy uh, is a different use of space and time so the city at night is by himself by herself um, uh, and a netotopy because uh, at night we we are supposed to be asleep and not awake, and so we are contra contrariating our circadian cycle, uh, and it's an, a, a, a different use of space and time, <clears throat> and the liminarity because nightlife has uh, also a lot to do with translation and. Uh, with, with underground movements. Uh, it's a main floor of countercultures apart from dominant cultures, practices, values, and rules. Uh, there was um, a sweet public space. Maria, uh, yeah? uh, you've had 15 minutes. Do you think you could wind up fairly quickly? Uh, in I'll, three I'll, 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 Yes, three or four minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but we otherwise uh, it will here get. Here is the, the appropriation of public space uh, as an atropotopy also because it seems that uh, the street was uh, discovered in this time. Also, uh, in, post uh, in this uh, post confinement and lock lockdown times, the street is also being discovered uh, again. It's one similarity. Uh, here we have the, the appropriation of space. We have festive and musical rhythms. Uh, I underground, I underline the, the um, stimulation, sincerity, sincerity uh, the pleasure and design, desire, the freedom that uh, are involved in dance and, and music. <clears throat> and dance and music can revert and the original river to social convention. Uh, there was a plurality and diversity of music and party, uh, music and dance. Uh, this, these maps that, uh, are similar with the, the previous uh, presentation. Uh, is a, sp a, a place of emancipation of women, music and design. Uh, it's a place also of LGBT emancipation, and nowadays, we five years ago more or less, we we have uh, uh, we are in presence of the a queer movement, uh, more related with electronic music, and um, that are uh, that that uh, uh, produce many parties in in many spaces. Someone informal, someone formal. Uh, but it's a movement that I am exploring now, uh, this, this movement. Uh, my study remarks, uh, the production rhythms of Nocturnal City and party district are, the, are, the, are the dialectical. There is a neoliberalization of space and a urban poesis and heterotopy. Uh, there are the realization process and different 
territories uh, that, uh, which marks not a new city, and the street, the synesthesia, the sense, the celebration, and the com communal emancipation are the not to yeah, Basically, what I was uh, uh, talking was how practically, like two weeks after the regaining uh, of uh, Estonian independence, uh, there was the first underground club party already like uh, uh, organized and how uh, this was kind of a like a dismissal of all the old Soviet values and uh, they brought in this kind of individual global uh, thinking of being part of the whole world so yeah mm. we had yeah, one more comment uh, underground you know clubs and parties etc uh, in the past we had very you know uh, interesting and strange inventions like uh, in our case in Warsaw we had so-called flying university so professor they were going to private apartment to lecture and they could lecture and say you know and talk about everything including Polish history after the war etc so uh, it's just uh, you know just coming back to Enrico question we talk now about different social political reality and of course economic reality because business is business and everyone can money taxes you know you pay rent so you have to think in economically also about it mm. so we're getting this idea of you know the sort of um process of I don't know what you could call it partification or, or the way in which nightlife is is grows in different sort of drivers and um, and uh, also the experiences and responses to it. Apparently, uh, Claudia has no internet. So Enrico, would you be able to present? And actually, okay. having forty years of your district's history might flow on quite nicely from this present discussion. Yeah. So, uh, before start, I want to just say that uh, Homer Simpson is saying stupid word, and uh, I think it's a really important message to everyone that I want to share with you. And, and now I will share my presentation, or at least I will try it. And could I just say that Enrico is a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Milano Bicocca, is it? And the title of his presentation is Postcards of Turin by Night, 40 Years, uh, you can see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I will try to start. Uh, so I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Milano Bicocca, where I got my PhD doing a research about uh, clubbing and spe specifically about clubbing and pleasure. But uh, now I will talk about my new research and the problem that I'm going to face. Uh, another important thing I want to say that I hate English, but sometimes I'm really happy to be here to talking with uh, you after a presentation of people from uh, Eastern Europe and from, uh, uh, from Porto. And because I think it's important also for our country, country like us to unite and to share our story, our story about night. So, uh, I'm sorry, but, but, but my presentation is not the usual, almost like a paper uh, format. I thought it would be better to do something to do uh, for me to do something different, since uh, since I'm stuck in a deadlock due to due, due to the COVID-19. Last year, I was granted for a four years uh, research about uh, uh, nightlife in Italy. And uh, I, I should uh, have studied uh, three natural spaces in three different uh, uh, Italian cities. I was going to study yacht urban open spaces in Turin, LGBT cruising ground in Milan, and uh, immigrant parties in Napoli. Uh, the aim of the study was to describe what is happening and how it's changing Italian nightlife and to give voice to unrepresented subjects subject in our country's public debate. Uh, with a specific, specific uh, sorry, with a specific uh, focus on topics such as pleasure, alcohol, drugs, sociality, and so on. Okay. Uh, 
but just at the beginning of the second year of my research project, COVID messed up our lives, I have to change my research goals, case studies, timetable, and so on. Uh, I was supposed to study LGBT sex spaces in Milan this spring and summer, but this was impossible, of course. So I, right now, I'm, uh, I'm not sure which path this research will take, but I'm thinking about to focus only on the city of Turin, where I live. So for this reason, I decided to use this uh, conference and this uh, digital uh, space to share with you what I'm working on. I'm working, I'm working on the reconstruction of the history of nightlife in Turin from below to understand which topic and uh, issues I have to focus to study, to study next year. So it will be a, like a, a description, more a really general description of what's happening in the Turin nightlife in the last 40 years. Uh, I stuck a lot on this first uh, image, on the first, uh, on the first uh, slide, because this is my email. I hope that someone will write me and want to talk to me about uh, what to do with, the, with this research and give me their suggestion. So, to start, Torino is a city located in the northwest of Italy. Uh, beside, besides being the first capital of the country and one of its main industrial hubs, hub, Turin has been the hotspot, first of all, of extra parliamentary left during the 60s and, and the 70s, and then of yacht subcultures from punk to rap from the 80s and the 90s. Uh, the story of nightlife uh, in Turin began with the end of its industrial epoch, when the decline of fiat became apparent. Uh, for those who for those who do not know, FIA stands for Italian Automobiles Factory Turin. It was not simply an, an automobile factory brand, it was an industry capable of shaping the history and geography not just of Turin, but also of Italy. I'm referring to mass immigration that uh, in the second post-World War, so millions of, of people free from the southern Italy, Italy toward Turin. This is why Turin is known, uh, was known as the Italian Detroit. So I start with the first video. Are you seeing it? I, I hope you are. You seeing it? Uh, the, cast, the current industrial industrial crisis of the 80s seems to coincide with the beginning of the touring nightlife. Uh, to present this passage uh, from uh, the industrial era to the new nightlife uh, area or something like that, uh, I choose to focus on one specific building that is the, is the Lingotto building. Lingotto was one of the Fiat most famous factory since it, it was the home of the first Italia assembly line like those uh, projected by the, uh, Ford in Detroit. An assembly line of almost 500 meters. In 1988, the Lingotto was the main, main non-human actor of in a short film movie that we are seeing uh, of Alberto Signotto, an underground video artist. This is a very long tracky shot of the factory, abandoned by the Fiat because the Fiat was already not uh, working there. But uh, this, uh, in this video, they are, uh, it's populated by the imaginary characters of the po poem of Gottfried Ben, a poem about Nietzsche madness in Turing. So we will see also the horse at a certain point. But if we move to the second video, It's uh, on the right. It's what, uh, what the Lingotto is became nowadays. Lingotto has become a multifunctional center with cinema, shopping center, art gallery, exhibition area, auditorium, and even a car race circuit. What does it have in, uh, to do with uh, nightlife? Every year, Lingotto hosts two of the most important electronic music festivals in the world, club to club and movement. So therefore, uh, Lingotto represents both the industrial past of the city and its, and its wounds, but also the city attempt to open up to the nightlife and its economic exploitation. But this is just one possible storyline. Because if we go deeper into the analysis, a more complex and nonlinear story emerges. What I will present in the next slides are the contradiction, ambiguities, plot twist of this story, of the, uh, of the, of the story of, uh, of Torino nightlife. So, if I move. Okay. 
the complex relationship between this city and its night starts at, uh, as early as the 80s, uh, when Turin was still a working class city, even if in crisis. Uh, so it was industrious by day and semi-deserted at night, a city dominated by the pro a Protestant ethic uh, celebrated Gianni by Gianni Agnelli, is, uh, who is the man on the left. Uh, Gianni Agnelli was the fiat char, fiat char person and the symbol of the city. So in his, in his quotation, what he's saying is it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, we are with the people of Turin, uh, people from the mountain, the uh, people that uh, go wake up early and go to bed, uh, go, sorry, people who wake up early and go to bed early to work. But the consequence of this situation in everyday life are reported by the Clino, one of the first Italian punk hardcore bands. In the same year of the, of the Gianni Agnelli interview, they, uh, register and uh, produce this song that it's called uh, Turin in my city that's why it's one of the hatem of the city uh, what they say in this uh, in this song growing up in boredom without knowing what to do growing up in boredom without a fair a future to work for in a city where not, nothing ever happened Turin is my city of course i'm saying that because uh, uh, in the 80s, uh, with squat, with uh, party, with uh, play music, uh, the night start to, in my opinion, start to uh, change in the, uh, during nightlife. So, but uh, for, a, for, a, for a working class city like Turin, the, the, uh, the industrialization produced a lot of things, poverty, social conflict, and heroin, but also a proliferation of disused space. Okay, with these uh, abandoned factories as the ideal place for new clubs and temporary raves. During the 90s, uh, Turin nightlife acquired a certain fame, even beyond national borders, with two specific areas as the first night epicenters. The Murazzi is, uh, uh, is the waterfront of, of the city near the city center, and the, and the Doxdora, a former industrial area in the suburbs. Uh, this, both these uh, two night districts were famous for gathering uh, heterogeneous, nosy, and alternative crowds. So, the, like the Bohemian crowds that was described below. Uh, this, this discovery of the night as a new place for mass entertainment was a bottom-up process, uh, thanks to the action of, the priv of, of private individuals. So, it was uh, something different to the British nightlife economy, where urban plays were used to... Uh, were, used night as a tool for Uber revitalization and regeneration. These were people that want to make party. At least that, this is the zero that we are telling us. But at the beginning of the new century, something uh, changed. Following massive urban redevelopment plans, the Quadratilo Romano, a central neighborhood, so in the city center, in the very heart of the city, became the new center of Turin at life. And the Murazzi, there was were before a place for uh, like alternative party and also dangerous uh, uh, meeting uh, were gradually normalized and commercialized. So nightlife begun, begins to be used as proportion, as proportional as promotional purposes. The party the parties of the Murazzi Riverbank made up their appearance in the city advertising brochures, while uh, quadrilateral would describe a shining example of sustainable nightlife. Tourism was compared to English city like Manchester, industrial town that changed it, their faces through a new branding based on culture and creativity. The city of, the, the city of Turin was not grey and working class anymore, uh, but was, was becoming a city of tourism. But something happened. Uh, if before the local politician seems to not uh, do, seems to do not, nothing to, pro, to promote or to group or to carb net life uh, as uh, it was if it was not a relevant topic uh, the, the, the great, uh, the great uh, grow, growing number of complaints from residents change uh, the, the way that the city deal with night I'm referring to the what I've called the securitarian tour that happened in the uh, the, the first decade in the tennis. I don't know how to say it in English. The lesser fair approach does not the, does not lo, uh, does not last long since the new decade is marked by a significant change. The problem of Omida, of Movida. So the no. Okay, I will. Uh, they will finish in ten minutes. Uh, 
Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. I'm okay. trying to... Uh, the problem of Movida, of the urban nightlife, are no longer left in the background, but they acquire prominence in the public debate. The most important event of the first half of the decade happens in 2012, when several criminal proceedings led to the closure of every, small, every clubs in Murazzi. Uh, attendee, owners, workers, and cultural association protested. They make a demonstration and also a petition, but not, nothing changed. It was useless. So they staged a Murazzi funeral that you can see in the photo, uh, where a lot of people march to the city hall with a coffin, the, the coffin that represents the Murazzi. A, Turin, a symbol of Turin nightlife just died, but night entrepreneurs and night girls are already moved elsewhere. San Salverio, a cheap and a multicultural neighborhood near the city center. The, security, the security, securitarian escalation continues throughout the second half of the, of the decade. The bottles of glass were prohibited in the all night district, uh, and a special police patrol uh, started to control San Salvaio, the new heavy center of the night, of the touring nightlife. The peak of this uh, securitarian phase is reached in 2017, when two main things happen in the summer. First, it's banned any sale of alcoholic beverage of eight after eight o'clock in any uh, nightlife areas. And uh, the second one, and the one the, on the photo, is the police enforce uh, this anti-alcohol uh, law in Piazza Santa Giulia. The beat, beating up uh, the Movida Gore, uh, as you can imagine from the photos, several people were injured and, on, and others are arrested without any apparent reason. Uh, this was, of, of course, uh, uh, a moment that would really uh, go uh, viral in uh, not not only in uh, like a Turin newspaper, but at the national level, because there was really violent images that was uh, it was uh, it was viral. Uh, the other picture is a pic is a meme or meme of our major Chiara Pendivna offering its uh, citizen a very specific, specific spicy aperitif. Chiara Pendino was like uh, really famous at the time as the, uh, it was pointed out as the person that there was uh, uh, causing all this uh, problem and this, this security tour of the city, of the city nightlife. So, but we can ask ourselves uh, the situation today uh, analyzing the, dist the distribution of premises for evening and night activities, Crivello points out the very strong concentration of facility in the city center. The regional downtown is crowded with ca uh, cafe, any restaurant, and wine bars, while the same cannot be said from a perif peripheral area and more external area of the city, where venues are, and events are much, much fewer. In addition, if we take a closer look in the night, uh, of, to the night districts, there are mainly civil consumption spaces to drink and eat something, what I call the foodification of uh, nighttime economy, referred to Torino, of course. While both music venues and non mainstream space for LGBT people, immigrants, and so on are slowly disappearing. The seriousness and the criticality of the situation become evident in 2018, uh, two years ago with a public discontent expressed to a petition, SOS Torino, La Fine del Modello Torino, the end of Turin model. It's the second petition in a few years after the one of Murazzi, and uh, in this petition, the cultural failure of this city is uh, inspected, and, and people ask to, things to change. So, we are in 2012, and uh, the, before COVID, the COVID eruption, uh, the year started uh, with a new song of Statuto. Statuto, Statuto are one of the most famous band uh, in Turin. They are uh, very historical and they play ska. Uh, this, song is, this song is yet another, about, uh, another obituary of the city, since they sing, this town is coming like a ghost town. All, all the clubs have been closed down, do dark, even in the, in, even in the daytime, sorry, this town no longer lights up. Uh, in the video, one of the symbols of this ghost town are the Murazzi, as you say in, in the picture. The show in the video as a desolate and foggy. And 
my opinion about that. I would like to point out that I'm not agree with this uh, deadly uh, interpretation. Uh, the problem is rather what uh, you focused on. In the first year of my doctoral research, I studied two, I studied two main squares of the of the main night uh, sorry of the main night district of Turin, Largo Saluzzo Square in San Salvador district and Santa Giulia Square in Banchiglia district. As you see, there is a lot of people in this uh, place in this square. This square cannot be described according to Sharon Zucchini phrase pacification through cappuccino. If compared to other more sanitized and civilized places of consumption, they are more complex and overcrowded and got major problems like drunk people, broken glasses, noise, violence, etc. They collect the youngest night goers, which perform practice band elsewhere, like playing games, dancing, singing music, and alcoholic picnics. The alcoholic picnics are people standing all together, uh, sit down, sharing alcohol and food. Uh, lastly, these two uh, squares receive more attention from the local press and also are more difficult con to control. So, may so maybe the city is a ghost town, but these two squares are crowded by noisy zombies and researchers should pay more attention to them. So, I finished my presentation and I go back to this image that I presented, the, it was the, pers the first image of my presentation. And with this, uh, this sentence, si scrive Torino, si legge far west. It may be spelled Turin, but it's pronounced far west. I choose this uh, image to conclude and uh, to begin because if, uh, if, if the night is the new frontier colonized by capitalism, that's happening to Turin too, uh, from almost 40 years. But uh, what's happening in Turin is different and uh, uh, at, at, at least have some peculiarity to other countries, but also to uh, Italian cities too. Uh, I think I will, to, uh, I will study this uh, particularity of this characteristic next year, but I'm not sure, 100% sure, and I'm searching for like a suggestion. Thank you. I Thank think. you very much, Enrico. I think and we have Absolutely fascinating. Uh, I, you know, I visited and I had no idea that uh, this was the history. Oh my goodness. Um, so, um, is everybody happy with going on to Christine Mady's presentation, uh, which is about Beirut? Uh, will you be able to stick with us so we have an audience and then maybe we can uh, just have a brief discussion at the end and make suggestions to help Enrico? and any other comments on um, the other presentations. Is that all right? Could I see any raised, could you raise your thumb if you're happy with that? Great. Jordi, can we go straight into Christine's? Greetings from Beirut. Uh, I will be turning off my video camera and starting the PowerPoint presentation. As some of you might know, Beirut's nightlife ranked third in 2019 after Bangkok and Barcelona. According to Letuvori, uh, cities and sometimes urban spaces have atmospheres that are conducive to certain activities. Lefebvre asks in rhythm analysis what attracts people to some events, places in cities. Do they only want to see them or there's something else? In this presentation, I explore what is specific about these streets in Beirut, specifically under the instability of the country. Referring to the media, reporters talk about the personalities of those streets, their moods, their atmospheres and their charm. They talk about the authenticity of these streets and how they are places second to none. They emphasize or they highlight the co-presence of visitors for the nightlife activities with the residents of those streets or what Lefebvre terms as the natives. These streets never sleep. Strolling, bar hopping, gathering and mingling take place there. They are streets that engage the senses with their music, food, drinks, textures, designs and so on. They are streets that could have activities varying between summer and winter, diurnally and nocturnally, 
yet where synergetic effects happen. They are streets offering diverse activities that attract mixed users in terms of their taste and interests and according to their age, gender, income, nationality, culture, and so on. To this end, I try to explore the atmosphere of those streets as defined by the Hitobori in relation to their morphology, their rhythms, and their social practices within the context of Beirut. Regarding the morphological layer of analysis, I study their accessibility in relation to the city scale and proximity to the capital center. I study their connectivity to side streets, their linear configuration and their openness and their conduciveness to various activities, their relation to sidewalks, building frontages, but also the proportion of the street width to the building height. I also study the buildings that flank these streets their material aspects, their proportions, and the flexibility of accommodating different uses on their ground floors. <clears throat> Regarding rhythms, I adapt uh, or I adopt uh, Lefebvre's rhythm analysis to understand what is going on in these streets. The rhythm of streets first starts with the buildings themselves. These streets have rhythm, these buildings have rhythms in their windows, their doors, their facades that could either speed up or slow down the attraction of a passerby to the building itself. There is also the rhythm of street of buildings lined next to each other along the streets. There are also the rhythm of streets in between building blocks and the rhythm of urban stairs again in between buildings. There are also the rhythms of activities happening along these streets. Some activities or events could be disruptive. For instance, on the left-hand side, the market, a Saturday market that disrupts the fast rhythm of uh, automobiles and replaces it with the slow rhythm of pedestrians moving from one stroll to another and enjoying the market. On the lower left corner, is a disruption due to works changing the, pa the, the paving from uh, asphalt to cobblestone, cobblestone, which nevertheless disrupted the spinning out of some of the night activities temporarily. On the right hand side are rhythms generated by activities on the ground floor along these streets. One is the rhythm of nightlife, of drinking, chatting and dancing, that is scaled down from the rhythm of the doors uh, and the windows of the building to that of the table and stools and the passage uh, created in between. And then there is the rhythm of co-working, studying, meeting for business or chatting that is created in the daytime activity of a cafe pub along the street. But the experience of the street with its rhythm shows the unfolding of urban life. And this life is of course formed by the users, by individuals and groups that stroll along those streets. As Lefebvre points out, sometimes wandering on a street is not for the sake of discovering the street itself, but for the sake of discovering oneself. One could wander to forget the pressures and the routines of the day and the instability that occurs in the rest of the city. So spending time in these streets could help people get over and start again in the next day. These streets have very specific features that make it difficult to duplicate their experiences, one being the heritage that these streets have or share in common. This refers to the architectural heritage of the French Mandate period 1920 to 1940, followed thereafter by the modernist period. These streets have other specificities, which is, its which is uh, other specificity, which is the relation of the main street to the side streets, to alleyways, internal courts, and stairs, as in the lower photo, which shows a stair in between a corner shop and a corner pub thus creating a stage that expands activities outdoors onto the street. 
There are, of course, also different uses that attract different user groups throughout the day and the night. On the lower right corner is actually a library that opens into the evening. Other activities such as those highlighted in the upper right corner with yellow are medical clinics functioning evidently in daytime, but also shops, reading areas, and um, um, on the lower left corner, a shop selling paraphernalia to tourists, both local and international. So how does one enter into the atmosphere of these streets with nightlife activities? And here I borrow the term from Lehtubori. According to Burme, atmosphere is actually the relation between subject and object. It is what lets us experience objects in a specific ma manner in their spatiality and materiality. It is similar to experiencing a twilight or appearance of a rainbow. An atmosphere is a combination of everything, natural and man-made, harmonious or in conflict. It is simultaneously an individual and a collective experience. It does not consist of a single location or function or occupation or activity. It is an accumulation of all of the above. And hence the importance of studying atmosphere in relation to rhythm and social practices. Atmospheres are not only aesthetic experiences, they are also social ones. They are made by people and they are lived by the people. The same street cannot generate the same atmosphere if the combination of these components change. Moving on to the streets where nightlife activities have been popular and vibrant in Beirut, we notice that these streets are in close proximity to the city center, with the exception of Badaru, which nevertheless is well connected to the city center along Damascus Road, and, moreover, shares many of the characteristics just explained with the other streets, including and mainly its architectural heritage. For the purpose of this presentation, I will focus on Jemaisi Street and specifically on one segment when it comes to the uses. Standing along uh, Jemaisi Street, one is able to see one of the landmarks of the city center, in this case, the minarets of Al Amin Mosque. This is due to both the proximity of Jemaisi to the city center, but also its rectilinear or rather linear configuration that allows for this visual uh, connectivity. If we analyze the figure ground of these five nightlife streets in Beirut, uh, we notice the following, that the building footprint is very similar with few exceptions for the larger grain here and there, such as the school highlighted in yellow on the left side of the rectangle. We see that the urban blocks actually have alleys, dead ends, and courts that stem from the main street. And if we look at the network of those streets, we see that the average distance between two side streets varies between 100 and 150 meters, which is a very walkable distance. We also see that there are a lot of side streets and tertiary streets <clears throat> that lead to dead ends. And generally, the streets are straight, except for Mono and Marim Khayil, that all this meandering due to the topography of those areas. And we see that in uh, Jemaisi and Marim Khayil, there is the occurrence of stairs that connect the streets to upper levels. Zooming into a section of Jemaisi to investigate the uses of the ground floor in relation to the configuration of the ground floor, we see that there are some trees along the street, even if not uh, many. We see that there is street furniture and also sidewalks, walls allowing for the appearance or occurrence of graffiti. There are, of course, uses that vary between uh, servicing nighttime and daytime activities, occasional uh, uses or daily ones. The street is heavily flanked by heritage buildings, 
with building frontages allowing for the interaction of residents with the visitors of the nighttime activities. There are some abandoned buildings and a lot of parking opportunities in a city that is heavily dependent on the car. Summing up and trying to learn from these uh, nightlife streets in Beirut, one could uh, draw the following lessons. The proximity of the streets to the city center is vital to their vibrancy and popularity. Also, their configuration that renders them open and adaptable to different events and activities with changing rhythms. The streets owe a lot to the buildings flanking them with their materiality and the flexibility of their ground floors. The mixed uses along these streets uh, create synergetic but also synesthetic effects that all uh, that, that all to the activities, the people, the sounds, the smells, and the colors intertwining between day and night. The streets proved resilient at least uh, in two disruptive events. The first was the October 2019 demonstrations, where at least along Jemaisi and according to interviews with some residents, there was a spillover of demonstrators uh, in the late evening hours onto the street to discuss and on the day's events, but also to disconnect and uh, be in an environment contrasting with what they had experienced during the day. The COVID-19 lockdown put the city to a standstill, yet the configuration of these streets and their architectural heritage with terraces and courts allowed for a social distancing and a slow uh, return to normalcy. Uh, these are the lessons learned from these streets. I would like to thank you for attending this presentation and would be of course available to answer to uh, comments and questions.